Before we get to today's episode, I have a quick announcement about a new YouTube feature that we just got access to. So if you want to skip directly to the theory, go to this location on the screen. Thanks, female robotic voice. Y'all good? Good. So like I said, this week we just got access to a cool new YouTube feature called the Community Tab. If you look right meow on the channel page and click right here, you'll see it. There's actually one right here on both Game Theorists and one on the GT Live livestream channel. And I wanted to take a minute to explain how the whole thing works. Basically it allows me to talk to you guys without having to upload an entire video about a particular topic. If, say, I do a collab with Captain Sparkles where we do an epic rap battle, sucking helium, boom! I can tell you about it right there. If I'm doing a couple panels at a convention like VidCon, boom, it's there, community tab. If there's a funny GIF or fan art or a video online that I think you guys gotta see, it would be right there. And likewise, you can share things right back to me. So if say I need you guys to submit videos to me for some reason, like to get you into a theory, then you can do that over there on the community tab off of my original post. Needless to say, there's a lot it's gonna be able to do, and any chance that I have to reach out and talk to y'all, the better. Unlike vloggers or other gamers, Game Theory is such a formatted show that takes so long to produce that a lot of times it's not easy to do little messages like this. It just breaks the flow of the show. So the community tab is going to be a really good way for me to communicate to you guys without having to do intro segments like this all the time. So real quick, let me break down how this is all going to work. On the Game Theorist channel, I'll be using the tab to do super amazing end card tournament style polls to do things like have you guys vote on new episodes. I'll also be posting surveys and things like I did for the Pokemon Go videos to get you guys to give me feedback that eventually goes into episodes. Big channel announcements announcements, new merchandise, convention appearances, that's all gonna happen over here. And over on the GT Live channel, that's more to spotlight you guys. So if you like watching the live streams, it's there that we'll be announcing when and where the next live stream is happening, giving you a link and preview to the game that we'll be playing, but also showing off fun fan art and gifs that you guys have made for the show. Hosting contests and prize giveaways, all that good stuff. So if you're interested in getting those notifications, click right here and make sure that you subscribe to that channel so that you don't miss a beat. And lastly, I'd love to hear what you think I should be using it for in the first place. This new tool is meant to make these channels better for you and give us a better way to communicate. So please let me know how you'd like me to use it. And since it's such a new untested thing, I'm sure there's going to be plenty of hiccups. So stay patient and we'll get through it together. All right. All right. Thanks for listening to all that jibba jabba, Furist Fist. And now let's talk a little bit about Mario's Jump. Episode start. <laughs> Internet, welcome to Game Theory, where the only magic mushrooms we do come out of boxes you have to hit with your head. True story, I love, love the Olympics. You loyal theorists watching know that I'm not much of a sports baller, but I gotta say, when the Olympics come around every two years, I am glued to the coverage. You gotta admit, it's awesome to think that these are the best athletes in the world coming together to compete for those medals. People who have trained their whole lives to be the best swimmer, runner, or ball dancer, horse, Prancer. All right, so not all Olympic sports are created equally. But this year's games were extra special because they ended with a twist that no one saw coming. During the closing ceremony of each Olympics, the hosting city hands the proverbial and literal torch over to the next hosting nation. But this year, during the transition from Rio to Tokyo, we were treated to this. Mario? That's right. Us gamers finally had a reason to care about the Olympics as Japan's prime minister closed out the Rio Olympics by rising out of a giant green pipe dressed as Mario Jumpman Mario himself. I mean, I know Mario and Sonic have been making it to all the past Olympic games in their little cash grab spin-offs, but this? This! Never in my life would I have expected to see sports and games cross over like this. Admittedly, I had a bit of a nerdgasm. 2020's Summer Games cannot come soon enough. But it got me thinking, Mario's known for jumping. Right? And the Olympics have all sorts of jumping related events, like the long jump, the high jump, the triple jump. So now that Mario sans Sonic is gonna be at the Olympic Games, how would he do? 
you. Obviously, he would win the gold medal in all of those events, right? Well, it's not as clear-cut as it seems. His performance actually depends on which game you're talking about. And remember, we're almost always seeing Mario jumping in the Mushroom Kingdom and not Earth. You'll notice in all of the Mario and Sonic Olympic games, games, his performance seems fairly realistic. So does this mean that his mean ups have more to do with gravity than massive Mario muscle? Or is his performance being tanked for the purpose of this series? So today we're looking at the physics of Mario's jump across games to see how he'll fare when the 2020 Summer Games roll around. Will he be the Michael Phelps of jumping, or will he just wind up in a doping scandal? And by that I mean, will he just end up looking like a dope? He, al he already does mushrooms, so um, the Olympic Committee has okay that. Just like they okayed all the Russian athletes this year. Oh, current events humor! Now, before we get started, we gotta talk terms. As you all know, Mario has jumped in a ton of games over the years, so I've limited the scope to major Mario platformers. Super Mario Bros. 2, Super Mario Bros. 3, Super Mario World, Super Mario 64 and the DS equivalent, Super Mario Galaxy, and Super Mario 3D World. Yeah, I've looked at a bunch of them, it's a lot of numbers. And for all the measurements, I've assumed that Mario is at his Nintendo official height of 5 foot 1 inch or 155 centimeters, despite me arguing in the deadliness of Bullet Bill episode that he's technically 4 foot 6. I mean, when you compare his proportions to those of real life athlete Shaquille O'Neal, there's no denying the truth, but after 5 years of fighting the good fight for accuracy and Nintendo scaling the heights of its characters, I'm just gonna concede defeat. 5 foot 1 it is. So all that being said, first things first, how high does Mario jump? Well, it'll come as no surprise, but this varies across games. I mean, if they can't keep his height consistent, why would anyone assume otherwise? Anyway, when it comes to just a basic, straight-up vertical jump that has no running start, in last place is a game that came as a surprise to me, Super Mario Galaxy. I mean, I'm no Neil deGrasse Tyson, but it seems to me that when Mario is on a planet that you can literally sprint around in less than a minute, the gravity would allow you to catch some extra air, but nope, apparently not. Mario's vertical jump height in that game comes in at 9 foot 6 inches, or 2.9 meters. Just under 10 feet, and keep in mind, that's his shortest jump, and that's with no running start whatsoever, so these numbers are gonna get ridiculous in a hurry. Coming up in fourth place with Super Mario 64 with a jump height of 10 foot 3 inches, or 3.1 meters, Super Mario Bros. 3 and 3D World were both next with 13 foot 3 inches, or 4 meters, and 13 foot 11 inches, and 4.24 meters, respectively, leaving our grand champion Super Mario World for the Super Nintendo with a colossal leap of 15 feet 9 inches, or 4.8 meters. Just think of how high he could reach if he actually bothered to bend his knees before he jumped. Well, actually, you don't have to. Remember I mentioned looking into Super Mario Bros. 2? Well, because Japan thought the real Super Mario Bros. 2 was gonna be too difficult for us Americans, and let's face it, they were right. It's a really hard game. I've beaten it, though. It's one of the things I'm proud of in life. For us, they just reskinned the game Doki Doki Panic and sold it to us as a sequel to Mario 1. And as a result of this not starting off as a Mario game, a lot of new game mechanics were introduced, some that stuck around, like Shy Guys, Sniffits, and Toad Speed, while others got their first and final appearance. In this case, Mario bending his knees to charge up his vertical leap. And doing exactly that makes Doki Doki Mario his number one vertical leap at 16 foot 6 inches. A grand total of 5 full meters. That's higher than all his running leaps too, as Super Mario World's run and jump just misses the mark 4 inches shorter at 16 foot 2 inches. 4.9 meters. But let's put all all this into perspective. The Guinness World Record for highest vertical jump was set earlier this year at a little over 5 feet 3 inches or 160 centimeters. That's a mere third of Mario's highest jump. The greatest jumper in human history is Javier Sotomayor from Cuba, who in 1993 set a world record for the Olympic high jump with a leap of 8 feet a quarter of an inch or 2.45 meters. This guy was 6'5", over a foot taller than Mario, and he had a running start, and Mario Mario still beats him with his lowest Super Mario Galaxy jump, which remember is just over 9 feet. 9 feet is the height of a small school bus and Mario clears it without breaking a sweat. Those huge double-decker buses in England are between 14 and 15 feet tall and at his best, Mario clears those by an extra foot. But before we get carried away with ourselves, maybe we're not giving mankind a fair fight here. Remember, in most games, Mario is jumping in the Mushroom Kingdom, which could have a different gravity than ours. As I mentioned earlier, we see when he competes with Sonic at the Olympic Games every few years, taking place on Earth, Mario's performance is a lot more, for lack of a better word, human. 
no offense. Hashtag Italians are human too. With high jump scores in those spin-off games topping out at like 2.6 meters or 8.5 feet, slightly above the current real life record, but nowhere close to the calculations we made in other games, maybe the difference isn't ability, but gravity. Well, it's a good thought, and we're right, but only half right. The gravity we see in the Mushroom Kingdom is way different from the gravitational forces we have here on Earth, but it's not weaker, it's actually stronger. To calculate the gravity in the Mushroom Kingdom, I slowed down footage of Mario's jumps and measured the time between the apex of his jump and when he reached the ground. I then plugged this into a kinematic equation that used a known distance, in this case how far Mario was off the ground at his highest point, and the time it took him to land in order to isolate the acceleration due to gravity. TLDR, I did some sciencing, got some numbers. The acceleration due to gravity on Earth is 9.81 meters per second squared, and the gravity in the Mushroom Kingdom blew that out of the water. The lowest I got was in Super Mario Bros. 3 at 22.9 meters per second squared. In the 3D games, the gravity maxed out at 38.6 meters per second squared, nearly four times as strong as our gravity. You know Jupiter? Giant gas ball, big red dot, inspired the coolest of the Sailor Scouts? Well, Jupiter has a mass that is more than 300 times that of Earth. Its gravity is only 25.95 meters per second squared. All the 3D Mario platformers have gravity that greatly exceed that, and the 2D games are just a little bit behind. Assuming Mario weighs about 165 pounds, or 75 kilograms on Earth, short guy, slightly overweight, with that sort of gravity, he would be nearly 400 pounds. 181 kilograms! He'd break his legs pretty much every time he lands. For our Olympic jumps, switching to Earth's gravity would no less than double the heights and distances he would be able to fly. Makes you really appreciate that jump man middle name he's got going on for him. So that's height, but let's go back to normal gravity and check out distance. There are two final jumping sports that Mario can meddle in, the long jump and the triple jump. The long jump is exactly what it sounds like. You run as fast as you can, you get as much distance as possible. The triple jump is another of those sports that you're like, why? Why would this be considered a sport? You run and jump three times back to back to back. Why they skipped over the double jump is beyond me. It's sad too since the fourth jump is where I really shine. If only they had gone one step further and made the quadruple jump the legitimate sport it has always been inside of my heart, then I would be there. I would be there one day. The world will recognize the quadruple jump. So after looking across all the games again for distance, Mario's long jump from Super Mario 64 proves to be accurately named since it was indeed the longest single jump in his repertoire. To be sure I was getting the most accurate data, I calculated out across multiple trials on terrain that was as flat as possible. Side note, I have a newfound hatred for Lakitu's camera angles. Ugh, it's like he's filming the Hunger Games with how shaky his camera is all the time. This definitely made scaling the world around Mario's size a bit tougher since everything isn't on the same flat plane and is constantly moving Lakitu! But I took all of that into consideration, got enough screen grabs from consistent enough camera angles to make sure that the measurements were on point. Basing those measurements against the scaling of Bomb Bomb Battlefield's bridge and various other map placements. TLDR, more sciencing, more numbers. The long jump averaged out to be 533 pixels long, which, when scaled relative to Mario's height, is 43 feet 8 inches long, or about 13.5 meters. The world record for long jump at the Olympics belongs to USA's Mike Powell back in 1991 with his incredible leap of 29.25 feet or just under 9 meters. Without exaggeration, Mario's jump is about the length of the Hollywood sign. That's how long it is. If you took two fully grown giraffes, laid them on the ground as you do, and asked Mario to jump over them like some sort of plumber themed evil Knievel, he would clear them easily, leaving a bunch of confused spectators, and two confused giraffes. But now let's talk triple jump, cause this is where it gets ridiculous. Plugging three long jumps together gets you Mario's absolute longest jump in the history of his games at 131 feet, or nearly 40 meters. You know the distance between bases on a baseball diamond? That's 90 feet. So in three jumps, he's going a base and a half. NBA basketball courts are 94 feet long, so same thing there, a court and a half. Basically, it's like nine cars parked end to end. And no, not those little smart clown car things. Full manly cars. Obviously, it goes without saying, this 
crushes the existing world record set in 1995 by Jonathan Edwards of Great Britain, who got to 60 feet exactly, 18.29 meters. Not even half of Mario's performance. In fact, in three jumps, Jonathan Edwards was barely able to match Mario's single long jump. Long story short, if Mario were to truly compete at the Tokyo Olympic Games in 2020, he would dominate the other athletes but would struggle to get himself any sort of medal in any jumping category whatsoever. Because if we're opening up Mario to compete, that means the rest of the Mushroom Kingdom clan can throw their hats into the ring. Enter Luigi, a character defined by his slippery controls and his absolutely massive vertical leap. In fact, his basic running jump from Super Mario Bros. 2 almost topples Mario's super jump. Luigi is to the high jump event what China is to Olympic diving unbeatable, easily claiming the gold medal for himself. Remember Mario's quote-unquote super jump at 16 feet 6 inches or 5 meters? Well, Luigi puts that super moniker to shame, clocking in 2 feet and 3 inches higher, a jump that launches him nearly 19 feet into the air, 5.7 meters. And when it comes to distance, he's got Mario beat too. Sure, Luigi's long jump is impressive, but when it comes to horizontal distance, there is almost no stopping his triple jump from Super Mario 64 DS. See, the trick to Luigi's triple jump isn't just the fact that it has height, but it also has his signature flutter, which allows him to get extra mileage out of each of those three hops. And those flutters make all the difference in our hypothetical Olympic triple jump event, as Luigi's triple jump edges out Mario's three long jumps by just over three feet, clocking in at 134 feet 2 inches, or 40.9 meters, which is enough to knock Mario down a rung on the Olympic medal stand to bronze. You heard that right, a bronze. Luigi is only able to get himself silver medals in the distance categories. Remember how I said Doki Doki Panic solidified a lot of characters and abilities that would become canon for the Mario roster? Well, in doing so, Nintendo created themselves a monster. A jumping monster known simply as Princess Peach. Not only does her vertical leap slightly edge out Mario based purely on technique, her hover ability made canon through Super Mario Bros. 2 handily wins her the gold medal for both long jump and triple jump. It may not look like much, but a single jump from her propels her 45 feet 3 inches. That's 13.8 meters, nearly 2 feet further than Mario's long jump. Do it 3 times and you've got yourself a nearly 136 foot jump, a 41.4 meter behemoth triple that sends her into the next zip code. Man! And Nintendo would have you believing that she's the one in need of saving. Sure, we see in games like Super Mario RPG that the Mushroom Kingdom makes a big deal about how great of a jumper Mario is, but when it comes down to the numbers, he's actually incredibly average. At best, at best, Mario is taking home three bronze medals in jumping, and that's only if you disqualify Yoshi because he's a dinosaur. In the end, he's outshined in all events by his cowardly brother and his damsel in distress. Regardless though, well done Nintendo, Tokyo, and the Olympics for giving us gamers a reason to care about sports. That's one small step for man, one giant leap for Mario kind. But hey, that's just a theory. A game theory. Thanks for watching. First things first, make sure that you subscribe for more science and math based episodes coming out over the next couple weeks. Next week is a Minecraft one that has a really heavy science component. I'm super excited about it. I'm really proud of how the script turned out. It answers some pretty big questions about the Minecraft universe. I think you're gonna like it. So click on that dying Goomba right there to make sure that you subscribe and don't miss it. And now that we're all done debating pixel measurements in the comments, head on over to audible.com to research theories of your own. For instance, I'm thinking about doing a theory based on some ideas from Maestro Mario, a book about the music from the Mario universe. Or if you need a break from the Mushroom Kingdom, you could try All Your Base Are Belong to Us, which is not only an infamous video game meme, it's also about how gamers influence pop culture. Both have been really awesome books to listen to. In fact, I listen to them when I'm supposed to be talking to Gaijin Goomba on the phone. I mean, what? 
Fun fact though, Goomba, those headphones you see me wearing are not to listen to you better. They're helping to distract me through another hour-long slideshow of your trip to Japan. I can only stomach looking at pictures of a love hotel so many times, Goomba. So many times! So go ahead, be like me and listen to an audiobook anytime, anywhere. Like when you're brushing your teeth, washing your car, or say during the meeting where you're supposed to be paying attention to the Goomba talking to you. A big thanks to Audible for sponsoring this episode. They do a lot to help us and a lot of other YouTube creators make a whole lot more videos, so good on you guys. Big thumbs up. In fact, two. Two big thumbs up. Thanks a lot. And thank you to you guys at home for watching and supporting me and stomaching ads like this. In fact, for you supporting this video by watching it, they're offering a 30-day trial so you can go check it out for yourself. All you have to do is go to audible.com slash matpat and get yourself some audiobooks. They have a massive amount of books to choose from. Seriously, practically anything that you can think of. There's a book dedicated to the meme, All Your Base Are Belong to Us. Come on! Go check them out for a 30-day trial at audible.com slash matpat. That's audible.com slash M-A-T-P-A-T. And like I said, next week, Minecraft Science. Get hype.